Well, what role do you see arts education playing in helping push to reform and creating new learning communities? I love all these questions. These are great. <laughs> so Maxine Green, right, yeah. at a place up the street. Four, five, In the lesser known <laughs> institution. <laughs> yeah, so, just, so Maxine Green would tell us about imagination, that you really can't do this work without imagination being at the center of it. And from my point of view, there is no math or science without art and music. They're one and the same. Peter, you want to? Well, you know, I started the conversation with Michelangelo, <laughs> yeah. <time> ago. <laughs> Raphael. I right. mean, the whole outcome is, is that you want to create Renaissance I thought you folks. were talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <I was. laughs> but, but at the end of it, that's what you want to create. You want to give kids the opportunity to be global, to be able to interact in a global society and be well-versed. And sometimes we lose that. Right. You know, the fact that we want to teach kids ballroom dancing. We want to give kids cultural experiences to take them to a whole nother level because when you think about the road to college, it's about conversation. College is about your social network. And typically a minority kid feels out because he doesn't have the same experiences. Mm -hmm. Or he has a network or she has a network and have the same experiences. And to me, this, it's the school's responsibility to make those experiences happen. You know, one of my, uh, uh, the most interesting thing I've read in the last week was an interview with Jeffrey Canada uh, that was in a recent publication. And Jeffrey said, was asked a bunch of questions about why, you know, what was the scientific evidence behind providing the children all of these rich and varied experiences in the Harlem Children's Zone. And he said, there's no science here. As long as advantaged people want it for their kids, I want it for my kids and the kids here at home. Right. And I think that that, that speaks volumes. To and this gets to the resource <laughs> equity mm -hmm. issue. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you know in West Westchester County, right, mm -hmm. or in parts of um, suburban New Jersey, you have schools that have a rich and rigorous curriculum and a whole variety of content areas, including physical education, the performing arts, and so forth and so on. Um, and the state allows that. The state condones that. So, I mean, the real, the, the issue is, again, in terms of standards-based education, how do we make sure every school has the capacity to deliver, as I say, a rich and rigorous curriculum in all content areas, not just in the, in the ones that are being stressed now through the, this is one of my worries, again, about the narrowing of the curriculum mm -hmm. with the, and the testing, um, and then the underfunding of, 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 school, of, uh, of, of uh, high poverty schools is you simply don't have the resources, um, not to mention the space too, that's another issue which we could talk about, um, to ensure that kids have access to that. You know, that one of the Abbott decisions, the Supreme Court, when they ordered adequate foundational funding for kids in the poorest districts to be equal to what kids in the suburbs got, one of the reasons for that was to make sure that the schools had art and music. Mm -hmm. And the court goes on and talks about those things that tie kids to school, that kind of make a connection for kids to stay in school. So this has got to be part of what we're talking about in terms of a holistic approach, an equitable approach, an adequate approach, to make sure that the resources are there and the capacity is there, not just to deliver reading and, and math uh, and uh, the, uh, the assessed, the, the subjects that are assessed, mm -hmm. but also yeah, these, other, these other subjects It's related well. to Peter's point about the bar being so low well, to get, yeah. out, of, to yeah. get yeah. out of trouble. If you, can, right. if you can graduate and work at McDonald's or, or fight in a war someplace, then you're out, you're out of trouble, but there ought to be more to education right. than that. Right. So let, me, let me try one other thing on this question, which is really sort of interesting, right, I mean, uh, uh, to me. So uh, in Memphis, we're trying to sort of um, employ the work of Robert Sternberg, who's this cognitive psychologist, mm -hmm. talks about you know, the different ways in people, people think, right? Howard Gardner did it a different way with his multiple intelligence. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a disciple of Bob Sternberg, right? Who sort of says to us that there are three ways that, that we all sort of come at this, right? right? Some of us are hugely analytical, so we're able to write these fabulous essays or do algebra problems or to do the logic, right? Which is a sort of analytical piece. And then he sort of makes a, a very clear, compelling argument for the, the men or women who can fix your automobile, 
but they've just graduated from college or high school, or maybe not at all, right? But they can fix your automobile. You would take your, your TV station, you'd take your radio, you'd take your watch to people who've actually got a, a, little, a practical set of knowledge that um, is incredibly functional. And you all know people who have been really well educated, who haven't got a practical bone in their body, right? Mm -hmm. Couldn't navigate their way out of a paper bag to save their lives, right? But they've been really well educated. And then Bob Sternberg also makes an argument for those uh, creative people, right? Who uh, come to this developmental experience that are extraordinarily creative, but for some reason, you know, the practical and the analytical don't really quite work for them. And no school community, no school community is worth its salt that doesn't try to tend to at least all of those capacities, all those dispositions and appetites. And at the center of that is art, right? I mean, I think the, the court was exactly right. Um, because the first thing that folks want to give up is the art and music, right? They sort of say, these kids are poor. <laughs> They come from disadvantage. Why in the world would you give them art and music? And I would say just the opposite. Right. Absolutely have to give them the art and music because it's the anchor, right? It's, a, it's the heart and soul of what, what's a part of these communities.